Hey everyone, so Jim has dropped Vector Mark II firmware 3.0.12 and I'm going to go through two of the new features here. The two new features I'm going through are Transpose Link and Templates, Templates for Projects. There's another feature which is 2-bar, I think, and 4-bar sync mode. Uh, that's explained in the deep dive which Chris and Brian and Jim did last weekend. So, let's start with transpose mode. This is really exciting and it's something that a lot of us have wanted for some time. So, what I've got is a two-part project and I've got part one over here that sounds like this. And part two. Okay, I'm not going to win any prizes for composition on these, but um, you get the, the picture so to speak. And what uh, the new firmware edition has enabled is Transpose Link. And the way you get to that is you go to the part, you go to the sequence control page, and you go across to sequence control 5, and you make sure that Transpose Link is on. When you do that, you're basically opting your parts to be linked by any transposition controls that you uh, input for any of those parts. In simple English, you're creating a transpose link group, you're putting parts into it, and then anytime you do a transposition within one of those linked parts, they all will follow that behavior. So as I said, I'm in part one here, I go to part two, and it's also got transpose link on. So what I'm gonna do is start part one, bring in part two, then I'm going to transpose using the white keys, and then I'm going to transpose using the uh, encoder 8. So. Yeah. Right. incredibly useful and across your mono parts your chord parts being able to do that is going to be really good fun the only thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing group transpositions like that is you probably want to keep some counterpoint going as well you don't always want all of your parts transposing by the same interval but that's a whole other discussion and it's to personal taste Having the ability to do this, um, especially when you're creating groups of mono parts that are linked melodies, uh, immeasurable, immeasurably powerful. So now that we've done that, I'm going to show you the template mode. And I'm going to show you that by creating a new project. And I'm just going to set it up the way I would normally set up a project. Okay, so I go to global and route. And the first thing I do is go to my clock setting and I change that so that the external clock is sending at S24 to my PAMS. And then I go to the Jack Expander Triggs. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting um, Trigger one outputs for, for drum voice seven and eight, 7.1, 2, 3, and 4. 
uh, Triggs 1, 2, 3, and 4, Triggs 5 to 8, uh, Drum Voice 8, sorry, Drum Part 8, Voices 1 to 4. So, of course, I've got to go and connect, uh, configure my drum parts. So, I'm going to default to 32 steps for drum parts, and I'm going to set drum, shift, da, da, part 8, 32 steps, drum, shift, that, all right. Great. So, now I've got six mono parts and two drum parts. How about we also go ahead and set up a 32-step chord part on part six. And how about we route that? So part six. Oops. So you choose the part using the encoder. And if you want to change your MIDI channel, say channel one. Now I've got part six, channel one. That means that part six is uh, going to route out of channel one. So the other thing I could do is go back into my uh, parts one to six, which are all mono. And what about for my default, I want to have them set to length of 32. So I'm just going to go through and do that. So now I've configured parts one to five. One to five as mono, six as a chord part, and seven and eight as uh, a four voice drum part each. I've configured my clock output to PAMS and I've configured all of my triggers and I'm in a pretty good spot here to actually use this as a template. So what I'm going to do is save it and I have to save this a specific way. I have to save it as temple, tem uh, knowing the alphabet's handy. Whoever told you that was telling you the truth. Okay, so I've already got a template 01, so I'm going to save this as template 02. If you save a file as temple and then two numbers, the vector will recognize that that is a template project file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, sorry, say project. All I have to do is hit next. Yep, great. So now that's saved as template 2. Fantastic. Great. So what about if I want to go load a part? So load. You'll see... I've got template one and template two. Now, if I hit go, if I hit next here to load the project, you'll see that it's actually loaded it. It hasn't loaded the template file. It's created a new project, project 13, from template 02. So that means you don't have to stuff around or risk overwriting your beautifully made template. It's just going to make your project for you and increment to the next available uh, name, so Project 13, Project 14, etc., using that template. Okay, great. What if you want to edit your template? Okay, well, you can. And that's something that in the deep dive wasn't possible, but Jim's gone and done it uh, in Jim fashion. So if I want to edit this, what I do is I hit edit, I hold edit, and I hit next, and now I'm in the template file, and I can go ahead and make some changes to it and then resave it. I am so happy with these two new additions. Um, the template thing alone is going to save time every time I set up. And also I can have different templates, one for this vector in my big case, one for the vector in my small case, uh, and so on. Uh, so thanks very much, Jim. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. And I hope this explained those two new features to your satisfaction.